As the movie opens, we are on a plantation. We see southern bells and children playing. The workers are going about their chores, and an army of Confederate soldiers march through the grounds. We see a slave, Eli, getting captured and attacked by the slave overseers. His wife stops, then keeps running. Jasper, the head overseer, chases the wife on horseback, throws a rope, and lassoes the woman around the neck. She tells him to take action rather than suffer the consequences of an attempted escape, so he obliges and shoots her dead. As night falls, General Blake, the master of a woman who tried to escape with others, returns to his cabin and tells the woman to say her name. She refuses, so he beats her and then brands her with a poker from the fire. She finally acquiesces and says, Eden, her name is Eden. The next morning, the slaves are in the field picking cotton. Jasper is riding around and giving orders. If someone speaks out of turn, he hits them. Soon, a carriage of new people in chains arrives. Southern Belle Elizabeth inspects the slaves-to-be with her daughter, who sees one she thinks is pretty, and they name her Julia. The new slaves are given the strict rules of no talking unless a white person gives them permission and to obey all orders. Eli continues his attempts to persuade Eden to try to escape again as soon as possible, but she is afraid of being captured and killed. She tells him to wait. After, Julia comes to visit Eden and tells her that she is pregnant and she knows about Eden and she is the one to organize an escape. Eden tells her that she has to remain quiet and obedient. That evening, the soldiers go to the mess hall. The general gives a speech about the Civil War, inspiring the soldiers to keep up the fight to preserve their land and heritage, which they claim is rightfully theirs. He congratulates them on the Civil War battle they just won and displays the Union uniforms that they captured. The slave women are the soldiers' servants there in more ways than one. Daniel, a shy young man, wants to be with Julia, so Jasper orders her to his cabin so Daniel may have his way. Later at the cabin, Julia attempts normal conversation with Daniel. She mistakes his kindness for respect and says he is different from the others whom she calls monsters. Suddenly, Daniel turns on her, angrily demanding why she dared speak with him without permission. He shouts he is a Confederate soldier and he is in charge. He then yells, attacks her until she is badly injured. In the morning, a bruised Julia is late for work in the fields. Eden goes to comfort her, then sees she is miscarrying her baby and screaming in pain. As a distraction, Eli calls overseer Jasper an uneducated. He goes to Julia anyway to investigate the commotion, then permits Eden to attend to Julia so she can get cleaned up. He returns to Eli and tells him, as a punishment for his comment, he must go clean out the shed, which really is a crematorium. Inside the shed, Eli sees the gold cross worn by his wife amongst cinders of ashes and bone, and he begins to weep. The general has had his way with Eden, and afterwards, during a turbulent slumber, she is awakened by the ringing of a cell phone. It is modern times, and she is in bed with her husband as her daughter joins. Eden, whose real name is Dr. Veronica Henley, is a sociologist specializing in dark-skinned woman studies. She is to leave for a convention in Louisiana to promote her book that morning. She has a quick online call with a type of talent scout and promotion organizer, Elizabeth, who makes some off-color comments that leave Veronica weary of her intentions. Once at her hotel, her friend Dawn, another conference speaker, comes to visit. They make plans for dinner and fun after the conference. Right after she leaves, an unknown man delivers a bouquet of cotton and flowers with a note stating, Look forward to your homecoming. While Veronica is speaking at the convention about racism and the patriarchy and how it defeats dark-skinned women, Elizabeth has entered her hotel room and just sneaks around, touching things. We see the exuberant crowd being inspired by Veronica's speech as spectators congratulate her. In the elevator, the child seen earlier at the plantation shushes Veronica, stating that she will get in trouble for talking. At the restaurant, Sarah joins them. They try to sit the trio at a back table, but Dawn demands to be sat at the best table there. During dinner, they discuss men and double dating. When a stranger at the bar sends over a drink for Dawn, she plays the debutante and turns him down. The three split up because Veronica wants to take an early flight to get home to her family. She thinks she is in an Uber, but suddenly Elizabeth turns around and Veronica is attacked by Jasper, her husband, until she is rendered unconscious. 
We are now back at the plantation, and General Blake's cell phone rings at 3 a.m., and he answers it outside. It has to do with Veronica's husband in an upcoming election for which he has proposed a bill regarding for. He makes rude comments and promises to take care of it. He hides his cell phone in the horse's saddlebag. Veronica observes this and feigns sleeping when he returns. Julia does not show up at the field for cotton picking in the morning. Jasper is angry and vows to punish her. He sends Eden to go fetch her. When Eden arrives at Julia's cabin, she finds her dead from the rafters in her nightgown. Eden is devastated by her death. In the fields, she is despondent and knows she must plan their escape that night and tells Eli. She awaits for the general to be asleep, then clambers out of bed, careful to not step on the creaky floorboards. Once outside, she meets with Eli. Before they run for it, she remembers the cell phone is in the saddlebag and goes to retrieve it. Suddenly, a drunken Daniel and his friends stumble upon them, so they drop the phone and hide. The soldiers find the phone on the ground, which is odd because cell phones are against the rules, but Daniel takes it with him anyway. The two Confederate soldiers hear a noise in the grass, but only Daniel stays to investigate. Eli creeps behind him and says his name. Daniel turns and Eli hits him with a rock. When he falls, they search him for the cell phone. Eli tells Veronica that if he doesn't make it, she must make sure the world knows about this modern slave plantation so they can put an end to it. Veronica knows there is a cell signal at her cabin, so they return and call the police, but their call is muffled and soon disconnects. They try again, but his phone has facial recognition, so they must use General Blake's face on the screen. The two enter the cabin, assuming he would be asleep, but he is waiting for them behind the door and strikes with a sword. Eli has a hatchet, but is immediately disarmed as it is knocked to the floor. Veronica uses it to attack the general, who retaliates by striking her with the sword and beating her. Eli comes to her aid, but the general takes the hatchet and does bodily harm to him, striking Eli until he is dead. Veronica then attacks Blake, hitting him with anything she can grab until he falls to the floor and she runs out. He goes after her, only to find she is waiting sword in hand right outside the cabin door. She thrusts it into his side, stating, my name is Veronica. He is injured and in great pain. She forces him to open his eyes so she can use his face to open the phone. It works, and she calls her husband, Nick. She speaks a bit trying to explain and is able to send a GPS pin to her husband so he can locate her in the plantation. It works, and help will soon be on the way. Maybe. Before she goes, she takes down the Confederate flag and wraps the general in it and drags him to the shed where so many of the kidnapped dark-skinned people were cremated. The general is not dead, and he says, This doesn't end here. We are nowhere and everywhere. Jasper finds her outside the shed. He asks what she has done with the senator, which is the general's true identity. She tricks Jasper into going inside the crematorium, setting it ablaze. She puts on the confiscated Union uniform jacket and rides off on a horse. The Confederate soldiers trail after her shooting, but she is able to dodge them all. Now the only one in pursuit is Elizabeth. She really does not appreciate the Dark Skin Lives Matter movement. She shouts many racial epitaphs saying that Eden must accept what she is, which means she is nothing but a cotton picker as she shoots into the forest. Elizabeth says she picked every other captive dark-skinned person, but her father had to have her, so he took the risk. She sees Eden's horse, but she is not there. Eden comes up on her from behind, lassoing a rope around her neck and taking control. Elizabeth has a knife and is stabbing Eden with it. The two wrestle, but after she takes a few jabs, Eden gets the advantage and starts punching Elizabeth. Eden is able to subdue her and rides with a horse, dragging her behind. Elizabeth hits the statue of Robert E. Lee, thus breaking her neck. Eden, or if you will, Veronica, rides off the plantation property into modern civilization and escapes her torment into freedom. A sign reads that this has all been part of a Civil War reenactment resort that took things to the extreme. The police arrive and the whole secret antiquated society longing for the return of slavery will soon be exposed. What do you think about this movie? Leave a comment below. If you want to watch more on Movie Shortens, click on our next videos or playlist on the screen. Thanks for watching.